the religion of Islam presented by the Quran and Sunnah Part 7. 6. The teachings and morality of Islam. A. The commands. 5. Patience and enduring harm. Allah Almighty says, and be patient with whatever befalls you. This is a matter of firm resolve. O oh my son! Establish the prayer by performing it to perfection, enjoin good and forbid evil, and bear patience upon whatever adversity you face in the process. Indeed, my instructions to you are from those that Allah has decided you should do, so you have no choice in doing or not doing them. Surat Luqman, 17 He also says, O you who believe, seek help in patience and prayer, for Allah is with those who are patient. O you who have faith in Allah and follow his messenger, ask for help from Allah in everything, through the beauty of patience and by establishing the prayer in the way Allah has instructed. Allah is truly with those who are patient, giving them success and helping them. Surat al-Baqarah, 153 And he says and we will surely grant those who remain steadfast their reward according to the best of their deeds. The wealth, pleasures and luxuries that you have, O people, will come to an end no matter how much it may be, but the reward that is with Allah will remain. How then do you give preference to that which is perishable over that which is lasting? We will certainly reward those who remain steadfast on their oaths and who do not break them according to the best of their good deeds by multiplying its reward by ten times up to seven hundred times. Or even more. Surat Anal, 96 The Prophet, may Allah's peace and blessings be upon him, was remarkably patient, enduring harm and not returning evil with evil. As he called his people to Islam, they hurt and beat him, injuring him. He wiped the blood off his face and said, O oh Allah, forgive my people for they do not know. Al-Bukhari and Muslim. Sixth, Modesty. A Muslim is a chaste and modest person. Modesty is one of the branches of faith, and it prompts one to act virtuously and prevents one from obscenity and immorality both in words and deeds. The Prophet, may Allah's peace and blessings be upon him, said, Modesty brings nothing but good. Narrated by Al-Bukhari in the Book of Courtesy, Chapter, Modesty, 835. 7. Dutifulness to one's parents. Dutifulness, kindness, and humility towards one's parents represent one of the fundamental duties in Islam. This duty becomes even more due as parents grow older and more in need for their children. Commanding dutifulness to parents and affirming their rights, Allah Almighty says, Your Lord has ordained that you worship none but Him and show kindness to parents. If one or both of them reach old age in your care, do not say to them a word of annoyance nor scold them, rather speak to them noble words, and lower to them the wing of humility out of mercy. And say, My Lord, have mercy upon them as they raised me when I was small. Your Lord, O servant, has instructed and made obligatory that you worship none but him, and he has instructed that you be good to your parents, especially when they become old. If either of them or both of them reach old age with you, do not become annoyed with them by uttering words that indicate the same, do not scold them and do not be harsh when speaking to them. But say to them kind words that are soft and courteous. Humble yourself before them in humility and out of compassion, and say, O oh my Lord, be merciful to them as they have brought me up in my childhood. Surat al-Isra, 23-24 He also says, We have enjoined upon man kindness to his parents. His mother bore him in weakness upon weakness, and his weaning took place within two years. Be grateful to me and to your parents. To me is the final return. And I commanded the human to obey his parents and do good towards them in matters that do not lead to the disobedience of Allah. His mother carried him in her womb having to face difficulty upon difficulty, weaning him off breastfeeding within two years. I told him, Be grateful to Allah for every blessing he has bestowed upon you, then be grateful to your parents for their care and upbringing of you. To me alone is your return, upon which I shall requite each person as he deserves. Surat Luqman, 14 A man once asked the Prophet, May Allah's peace and blessings be upon him, who is more worthy of my good companionship. He said, Your mother. The man asked, Then who? He said, Your mother. He asked, Then who? He said, Your mother. He asked, Then who? He said, Your father. Narrated by Al-Bukhari in the Book of Courtesy, Chapter. Who among people is the most entitled to good companionship, 8-2. Hence, Islam enjoins the Muslim to obey his parents in whatever they ask him to do, unless a sin is involved, for none should be obeyed when it comes to disobeying Allah. Allah Almighty says, But if they strive to make you associate partners with me of what you have no knowledge, then do not obey them. Yet keep company with them in this world with kindness, Surat Luqman, 15. 
Islam also instructs one to show respect and humility towards them, to honor them with words and deeds, to be kind to them in all ways, like providing them with food, clothes, and medicine, if needed. And to keep any harm away from them. One is also required to supplicate Allah and ask His forgiveness for them, fulfill their promises, and honor their friends. Eighth, Treating people with good morals. The Prophet, may Allah's peace and blessings be upon him, said. In another hadith, the Prophet, may Allah's peace and blessings be upon him, said. Among the dearest and closest of you to me on the day of judgment are those with the most excellent morals. Narrated by Al-Bukhari in the Book of Virtues, Chapter. Character of the Prophet, may Allah's peace and blessings be upon him, 4230, with the wording, Indeed, the best among you are those with the most excellent morals. Allah Almighty in describing his Prophet, may Allah's peace and blessings be upon him, says, Indeed, you are of a great moral character, Surat al kalam 4. In another hadith, the Prophet, may Allah's peace and blessings be upon him, said, Indeed, I have been sent to complete the noble morals. Musnad Ahmad. So, a Muslim should be noble-mannered and kind towards his parents, as we have mentioned, and towards his children, raising them in a good way, teaching them the morality and rulings of Islam. Keeping them away from whatever could harm them in this life and in the hereafter, and spending on them till they grow up and can rely upon themselves and earn their living. Likewise, he should deal with noble morals with his wife, brothers, sisters, relatives, neighbors, and all people. He should wish for his fellow Muslims what he wishes for himself and uphold good ties with his relatives and neighbors, revering the elderly, showing compassion towards the young and visiting and supporting the distressed among them, in compliance with the verse that says, Be kind to parents, relatives, orphans, the needy, near and distant neighbors, close friends, wayfarers. Worship Allah alone faithfully and do not worship next to him anything else. Be good to your parents, honoring them and treating them with respect, and be good to relatives, orphans, and the poor. Be good to the neighbor who is a relative and the neighbor who is not a relative, the friend you spend time with, the traveler who is a stranger and has no means whereby to complete his journey and to slaves. Allah does not like those who think too much of themselves and are arrogant with people, and praise themselves as a way of boasting. Surat and Nisa, 36 The Prophet, may Allah's peace and blessings be upon him, said. Whoever believes in Allah and the last day should not hurt his neighbor. Narrated by Imam Ahmad in Al-Musnad, 1780, and Ahmad Shakir said its isnad is authentic, Al-Bukhari in Al-Adab. Al-Bihaki in Shu'ab al-Iman, and Al-Hakim in Al-Mustadrik. Ninth, jihad in the cause of Allah to support the oppressed, establish the truth, and spread justice. Allah Almighty says, Fight in the way of Allah against those who fight you, but do not transgress, for Allah does not like transgressors. Fight in order to raise the word of Allah, against those of the disbelievers who fight you to turn you away from the religion of Allah. But do not overstep the limits of Allah by killing children, women, the elderly, or by mutilating the dead and so on. Allah does not love those who overstep the limits he has established and made sacred. Surat al-Baqarah, 190 He also says, Why is it that you do not fight in the way of Allah and for the sake of the oppressed men, women, and children who say, Our Lord, take us out of this town of oppressive people. And grant us from yourself a protector and grant us from yourself a helper. What is preventing you, O believers, from striving in the path of Allah in order to raise his word and to rescue the oppressed men, women, and children who call to Allah, saying, Our Lord? Let us leave Mecca, because its people are oppressive, due to their associating partners with Allah and their aggression towards his servants. Give us someone from you who will take control of our affairs, take care of us and protect us from harm. Surat and Nisa, 75 so, the Islamic Jihad aims at establishing the truth, spreading justice among people, and fighting those who oppress people, persecute them and prevent them from worshipping Allah and embracing Islam. On the other hand, it rejects the idea of coercing people to enter Islam. Allah Almighty says there is no compulsion in religion. Surat al-Baqarah, 256 No one is forced to enter the religion of Islam, as it is clearly the true religion and there is no need to force anyone to believe in it. Truth stands clear from falsehood. Whoever rejects all those things that are worshipped besides Allah and frees himself from them, and has faith in Allah alone, has held on to the strongest rope for salvation on the day of resurrection and which will never break. Allah hears the statements of his servants, knows their actions and will reward them accordingly. Quran 2 2.56 During battles, a Muslim is not allowed to kill a woman, a child, or an old person, rather he should only fight the wrongful combatants. Whoever gets killed in the cause of Allah is a martyr and for him is a great reward and status with Allah Almighty, 
who says, Never think of those who are killed in Allah's way as dead. Rather, they are alive with their Lord, receiving provision, rejoicing in what Allah has given them of his bounty, and delighted for those who have yet to join them, of those whom they left behind. That they will have no fear, nor will they grieve. Do not think, O Prophet, that those who have been killed struggling for the sake of Allah are dead. Rather, they are alive with their Lord in his generosity, provided with blessings that we do not know about. They are delighted and rejoicing in what Allah has given them from his grace, and looking forward to meeting their brothers who are still on earth. If they are killed during a similar struggle, then they will receive the same grace as them. There is no fear on them in terms of what awaits them in the afterlife, and no sorrow about any worldly fortunes that pass them by. Surat al-Imran, 169-170 Tenth, Supplication, Tikr, and Quran Recitation The greater a person's faith is, the closer he is to his Lord and the more he supplicates and implores him to fulfill his needs in life and forgive his sins and elevate his rank in the hereafter. Indeed, Allah is generous, and he loves his servants to ask of him as he says when my slaves ask you concerning me, I am indeed near. I respond to the call of the supplicant when he calls upon me. If they ask you, O Prophet, about how close Allah is and about his answering of prayers, Allah is close to them and knows everything about them. He hears their prayer, and they do not need intermediaries or to raise their voices. Allah responds to the call of whoever calls him sincerely, praying to him. So, let them be devoted to him and his sacred law, firm in their faith, as that is the best route to Allah's response perhaps in that way they might be rightly guided in worldly and sacred matters. Surat al-Baqarah, 186 Allah answers supplications, if they are good for the supplicants, and rewards them for supplicating him. Another trait of the believers is that they remember Allah Almighty frequently, day and night, both secretly and in public. They glorify Him with all kinds of glorification and taker, like saying, Subhanallah, glory be to Allah, Alhamdulillah, praise be to Allah, Allah with Makran ilaha illallah, there is no God but Allah, and, Allahu Akbar, Allah is the greatest. Allah Almighty gives abundant rewards for that as the Prophet, may Allah's peace and blessings be upon Him, said, the Mufradun have gone ahead. They said, who are the Mufridun, O Messenger of Allah? He said, They are those men and women who remember Allah frequently. Narrated by Muslim. Allah Almighty says, O you who believe, remember Allah much, and glorify Him morning and evening. O those who have faith in Allah and do whatever He has legislated for them. Remember Allah abundantly with your hearts, tongues, and limbs. And exalt Him by glorifying Him, saying Subhan Allah, and proclaiming His oneness, LA with Makran Ilha Ilal, at the start and the end of the day because of their virtue and the ease in remembering Allah through them. Surat Al-Azab, 41-42 In another verse, Allah Almighty says, Therefore remember me, I will remember you. Be grateful to me, and do not be ungrateful. So, remember Allah with your hearts and your whole beings, and He will remember you with approval and protection, for you are rewarded according to what you do. Also, be grateful to Allah for the blessings He has given you, and do not be ungrateful by denying them or using them in prohibited ways. Surat al-Baqarah, 152 Tikr includes recitation of the Book of Allah, the Noble Quran. The more one recites it and ponders on its meanings, the higher his rank will be in the sight of his Lord. On the Day of Judgment, the following will be said to the Quran reciter. Read and ascend, in ranks, and recite as you used to recite when you were in the world, for your rank will be at the last verse you recite. Narrated by Abu Dawud, 1464, and this is his wording, at Tirmidhi, 2914, and Nasai in, as Sunan al kibra 8056, and Ahmad, 6799. Eleventh, seeking religious knowledge, teaching it to others, and calling them to it. The Prophet, may Allah's peace and blessings be upon him, said, whoever follows a path seeking knowledge, Allah facilitates for him a path to paradise. Indeed, the angels put down their wings for the seeker of knowledge out of pleasure with what he does. Narrated by at Mighty in the Book of Knowledge, Chapter, The Merit of Fiqh in Worship, 4153, Abu Dawud in the Book of Knowledge, Chapter, Urging People to Seek Knowledge, 45857. And Ibn Majah in, al Muqaddimah, 1781, and it was classified as Sahih, authentic, by al Abniyan, Sa al Jami, 5302. In another hadith, the Prophet, may Allah's peace and blessings be upon him, said, The best of you are those who learn the Quran and teach it to others. Sahih al-Bukhari 5027 In another hadith, the Prophet, may Allah's peace and blessings be upon him, said, Indeed, 
The angels invoke Allah's blessings upon the one who teaches good to people. At Tirmidhi. In another hadith, the Prophet, may Allah's peace and blessings be upon him, said. Whoever calls to guidance will have a reward similar to that of those who act upon it, without diminishing their reward in any way. Narrated by al Bukri in the Book of Virtues, Chapter, The Best of You Are Those Who Learn the Quran and Teach It to Others, 6236. Allah Almighty says, Who is better in speech than one who calls to Allah, does righteous deeds, and says, I am one of the Muslims, submitting to Allah. There is no one whose speech is better than the one who calls towards the oneness of Allah and acting upon his law, whilst doing good actions that please him, saying, Indeed. I am one of those who submit and humble myself to Allah. Indeed, whoever does all that is the one who is best in speech. Surat Fusilat, 33 Twelfth, Contentment with the Judgment of Allah and His Messenger Not showing discontent with anything prescribed by Allah Almighty, for He is the best judge and the most merciful Lord from whom nothing in the earth or heaven is hidden, and whose judgment is not affected by the whims of His servants or the greed of tyrants. Out of His mercy, He has prescribed for His servants what serves their interests in this life and in the hereafter and He has not charged them with anything beyond their capacity. Our servitude to him entails that we refer for judgment to his sharia concerning all matters, with complete heartfelt contentment. Allah Almighty says, But no, by your Lord. They will not believe until they accept you, O Prophet, as judge in their disputes and find no discomfort within their hearts about your judgments but accept them wholeheartedly. What these hypocrites claim is not true. Allah swears by himself that they will not have real faith until they refer for judgments to the Messenger, during his lifetime, and to the sacred law after his death in every disagreement between them, and are happy with the messenger's ruling, without feeling hatred about it, or doubting it, and accepting it completely and faithfully, outwardly and inwardly. Suratinus, 65 He also says, Do they seek the judgment of the times of ignorance? Who could be better than Allah in judgment for people who are certain in faith? Do they ignore your judgment seeking the judgment of the idolaters from the period of ignorance who pass judgment according to their desires? In the sight of those who have conviction and who understand that which Allah has sent to his Prophet, there can be no one better in judgment than Allah. But not in the sight of those who are ignorant and who only follow their desires, even though they may be false. Surat al with Makronida, 50 Let there be no compulsion in religion. One of the fundamental truths established by the sacred texts is that no one can be compelled to accept Islam. It is the duty of Muslims to establish the proof of Islam to the people so that truth can be made clear from falsehood. After that, whoever wishes to accept Islam may do so and whoever wishes to continue upon unbelief may do so. No one should be threatened or harmed in any way if he does not wish to accept Islam. Among the many decisive pieces of evidence in this regard are the following. God says, let there be no compulsion in religion. Truth has been made clear from error. Whoever rejects false worship and believes in God has grasped the most trustworthy handhold that never breaks. And God hears and knows all things. No one is forced to enter the religion of Islam, as it is clearly the true religion and there is no need to force anyone to believe in it. Truth stands clear from falsehood. Whoever rejects all those things that are worshipped besides Allah and frees himself from them, and has faith in Allah alone, has held on to the strongest rope for salvation on the day of resurrection and which will never break. Allah hears the statements of his servants, knows their actions and will reward them accordingly. Quran 2 256 God says, If your Lord, O Messenger, had willed for everyone on earth to believe, they would have done so. However, he did not will it to be so for a wise reason. He misguides whomever he wills through his justice, and he guides whomever he wills through his grace. You do not have the ability to force people to become believers, their guidance to faith lies only in Allah's hands. It is not possible for any soul to believe by itself unless Allah permits. Belief only happens with his will, so do not lose yourself in grief over them. Allah places suffering and disgrace on those who do not apply their minds to his proof, instructions and prohibitions. Quran 10 99-100 God says, If they argue with you, O Messenger, about the truth that has been revealed to you, then say to them in reply, I and the believers who follow me have submitted to Allah. Also, say, O Messenger, to the people of the scripture and the idolaters, do you submit to Allah sincerely, following what I have brought? if they submit to Allah and follow your sacred law. Then they are on the path of guidance.
If they turn away from Islam, then your duty is only to give your message to them, then Allah will decide about them. He watches his servants and will reward them according to their actions. Quran 320 God says, the duty of the messenger is only to convey what Allah has instructed him to. It is not his duty to make people accept the guidance that is only in Allah's hands. Allah knows what you reveal and what you keep hidden, whether guidance or misguidance, and he will repay your actions. Quran 5 99 It is important to note that these last two verses were revealed in Medina. This is significant, since it shows that the ruling they gave was not just contingent on the Muslims being in Mecca in a state of weakness. Some people might be wondering that if Islam indeed advocates such an approach, then what is all this we hear about jihad? How can we explain the warfare that the Prophet, may the mercy and blessings of God be upon him, and his companions waged against the pagans? The answer to this is that jihad in Islamic law can be waged for a number of reasons, but compelling people to accept Islam is simply not one of them. As for conversion, this is to be done peacefully by disseminating the message with the written and spoken word. There is no place for the use of weapons to compel people to accept Islam. The Prophet said in his letter to the Roman governor Heraclius, I invite you to accept Islam. If you accept Islam, you will find safety. If you accept Islam, God will give you a double reward. However, if you turn away, upon you will be the sin of your subjects. Sahih al-Bukhari, Sahih Muslim. Once people have heard the message without obstruction or hindrance and a proof has been established upon them, then the duty of the Muslims is done. Those who wish to believe are free to do so and those who prefer to disbelieve are likewise free to do so. Even when the Muslims are compelled to fight and then, as a consequence, subdue the land, their duty thereafter is to establish God's law in the land and uphold justice for all people. Muslim and non-Muslim It is not their right to coerce their subjects to accept Islam against their will. Non-Muslims under Muslim rule must be allowed to remain on their own faith and must be allowed to practice the rights of their faith, though they will be expected to respect the laws of the land. Had the purpose of jihad been to force the unbelievers to accept Islam, the Prophet would never have commanded the Muslims to refrain from hostilities if the enemy relented. He would not have prohibited the killing of women and children. However, this is exactly what he did. During a battle, the Prophet saw people gathered together. He dispatched a man to find out why they were gathered. The man returned and said, they are gathered around a slain woman. So God's messenger said, she should not have been attacked. Halid ibn al-Walid was leading the forces. So he dispatched a man to him saying, tell Halid not to kill women or laborers. Sunan Abi Dawood. Therefore, even in the heat of battle against a hostile enemy, the only people who may be attacked are those who are actually participating in the fighting. Had the purpose of jihad been to force the unbelievers to accept Islam, the rightly guided caliphs would not have prohibited the killing of priests and monks who refrained from fighting. However, this is exactly what they did. When the first caliph, Abu Bakr, sent an army to Syria to fight the aggressive Roman legions, he went out to give them words of encouragement. He said, You are going to find a group of people who have devoted themselves to the worship of God, i.e. monks, so leave them to what they are doing. 